So, hi there, welcome to the latest Democracy for Developer blog. Um, this is the first one we've done since the um, US election was called, so, you know, that's a big thing out of the way. And, um, yeah, I mean, like, there's, there's nothing to say, really. I mean, like, you know, um, lots of stuff happened in that election that just makes me think uh, there is so much scope to add uh, more kind of things to the game anyway so um so what's new in the last two weeks um the big obvious thing and this isn't a version that's out yet it'll be out in a few days um is australia uh will be in um it's quite an interesting country lots of mining um uh not particularly big on the kind of like environmental policies i think it's the only country that we've put in so far i think i'm not sure about the us um, that we've actually enabled uh, oil drilling subsidies. It's more for coal, actually, um, but that that policy covers like all like sort of fossil fuel subsidies. Um, also, the other things that were interesting about the U uh, the um, uh, yeah, Australia uh, from the point of view of the game um, is that not only does it have multiple parties, we say three parties. Obviously, I know there's more than three, um, but there's uh, compulsory voting, which does actually kind of like change the way you play the game to some extent um, and it's the first country that we put in that, that's had that you can turn that off if you don't want it and you can always turn it on for other countries if you want to kind of like experiment so we have Australia and this is the first pass of it and um, you start off very unpopular and this is a thing that I want to talk about uh, first of all let me just point out there we are there we are oil drilling subsidies the deficit is a little bit too high compared with the real deficit at the moment uh, and we have a few things that are going wrong. We have environmental protests, actually. Um, they've probably only just triggered, haven't they? Yeah. I'm still balancing Australia to get it right. You might think it's really easy because it's just changing a load of numbers so that they kind of uh, resemble what Australia is at the moment. But the thing is, the model is global. It's for every country. So if I, for example... Um, make it less likely for there to be environmental protests because there aren't huge environmental protests at the moment in Australia, then uh, I, I change all the other countries in the game. So it's a constant game of kind of like adjusting and tweaking things. Um, but the main thing is like Australia's in and obviously we'll take feedback from people. We're just getting content in at the moment and then we're gonna go back and, and, and like balance it. It makes a lot more sense to have the content in and balance it as one collection of countries than it would um, to kind of get one perfect and then have to completely change everything after the event. Um, so that's it. Something I don't think I've talked about um, is this. I don't think I've mentioned this. I may have, but I'm mentioning it again if I have. Um, this used to just have this blue chart. So if you go back here, like popularity is really low. And what it says is per percentage of the electorate who intend to vote for you. And that's true, like right now, that's really low. No one's gonna vote for me or hardly anyone, 5.6%. But this is average approval. And this is where we get into a really complicated, but I think quite interesting topic, personally. Um, and that is the difference between these two things. Um, I've spoken about that before in general terms, in that if everyone Th um, has a happiness of 49%, you get zero votes. If everyone has a happiness of 51%, you get 100% of the votes. Um, and people often forget this in real politics. So you can like lose an election quite badly um, or win an election by an enormous landslide. And there's not, you haven't really tweaked that much. Um, and what that comes down to is the fact that most elections are a binary thing. Uh, most electoral systems, you either vote for this party or you vote for the other party. Other systems are available, but most of the countries that we are focusing on don't have them. So there is a discrepancy here. And what's quite interesting is you'll find that if that if that green goes up just a little bit, this could shoot up massively. And it depends on the distribution of the voters' happiness. Um, and we can look at that. There's a way of looking at that if you go into electioneering. You can see we've got this huge cluster here. And this is where things get really interesting um, in a country like Australia where we're modelling three parties. Now, if you look here, um, the centre party has a massive amount of support, activists and members, and both 
us and the traditional opposition, um, we've got virtually no members or activists at all. Okay, we've got pretty much no support. Everyone is in the middle. And this is what's interesting when you have a three party system. If this was a two party version of Australia, we'd probably have like 40% of the vote maybe at the moment. I'm not quite sure where the 50% line would be. Um, but because there's a centrist party, they kind of have a superpower because they can get votes from the left and the right. They can get votes from the, the liberals and the conservatives. Um, being in the middle is a, like a good place to be. And the way we mo model the game is we assume that the opposition oppose you on everything diametrically and that if there is a third party, it kind of sits between the two as a moderate position. This makes the game much harder because just nudging someone over that, that line there won't get you anything. And this is why this is really low, okay? So um, yeah, just nudging over that isn't gonna get you loads of votes because a lot of the people that are here clustered in this area of happiness, um, they're gonna vote for the centrist party. They're gonna vote for the moderate party um, or the, the, you know, the, the third option. And this is really a difficult thing to model and I don't know how to fix it because what we do is we assume that you're kind of taking an extreme position, I guess. Um, in other words, if I go back here, it's really hard to explain and it's a, a really difficult thing to model. So there's three parties here. There's the green party here, there's the, the red party here and the blue party in the middle. And we're assuming that you're always here and these th these two are like this. We're never saying that one party is on one side of you and one party is on the other. And you might ask why, and that is because we don't actually model the political stances of parties. We just model them in terms of their opposition to your stance. And it would take hours for me to explain the reason why that has to be the case in, t in, in terms of modeling. Um, but it does. So it's slightly awkward because we have a situation where I think in three party systems with a, a, a fairly moderate electorate before we start pushing and pulling them in places um, that it's harder than it should be. And I wonder if, and this is what I'm basically asking people, whether or not we should nerf the third party slightly. So at the moment, the top third of happy people vote for you, the bottom third of unhappy people vote uh, for the opposition and the middle third vote for the third party. I wonder if we should squeeze that. So instead of going from like 33% to 66% happiness, it goes from like, you know, 40 to 60% um, to like squeeze that support. So, so we would carve off some of those voters there. And I think maybe we can do this on the uh, justification that often life is very difficult for third parties in a first past the post system or what the Americans would call an electoral college system um, because of the winner takes all mentality. Basically, if you're, um, if you get more than 51% in this, well, if you get more than 50% in a state in the US, you win all of their votes, right? And if you get more than 50% of the votes in a UK constituency, you don't even need that. You just need to be the, 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 the biggest, biggest candidate actually in the UK. Um, then, um, then you, you win that. Um, and all the other votes are lost. So you can have a party and we have them in the UK. We have um, like UKIP and the Brexit party and the Liberal Democrat party and the Green party. Um, and all of these parties get loads and loads of votes, but they're distributed thinly across loads and loads of constituencies. It's like getting 50,000 votes in every state in America. You wouldn't get anything. You'd never win the presidency, you know, but still, you know, hundreds of thousands, millions of people have voted for you. So um, should we model that by kind of slightly nerfing um, third parties? I think so, but I'm, I'm interested to know what people think. It's a really difficult problem. Really think it through before you go, obviously X, because actually it's a difficult thing to model. Um, so anyway, that's a new thing we added this, we, we added um, this, and I think it's very helpful. I, I'm thinking of moving that line in a three party system to where it should be. Um, because I think it's giving you a full sense of security in a three-party system that over that line you get the vote, right? Anyway, um, so, so uh, yeah, we've done that. 
a, a load of small changes have happened. Average temperature, where is average temperature? It's down here somewhere, isn't it? Or is it up? Oh, it, it, it's here. Average temperature now boosts immigration at a certain level, um, only at a very high level. Um, so average temperature is basically climate change. So what we're getting at is that a lot of countries become either uninhabitable or not just uninhabit uninhabitable, but like, for example, crops fail and the yield from farming fails with high temperatures um, or with really low temperatures uh, because like climate change can 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 change things in both directions depending on where you are maybe you get more storms and therefore uh, your crops are destroyed more and basically um, it leads to a, a, a lot of migration and um, we've already seen that with a lot of um, like um, migration from from Africa to Europe and anyway so that's a new effect that's in there that over the long term there will be more immigration to your country um, because we're, we're currently currently not modeling any countries that would have um, emigration as a result of climate change. Of course, that depends how bad it gets and what countries we, we model. Um, so there's a few other things that are going in. I, I did a little tool tip here to actually explain what what this is. Um, you get a boost to political capital at the start of the game when you're first elected of 10% and it fades down over time. It takes two terms to fade down. So uh, in the US, unless you change the term limit, it doesn't matter. Um, but basically this is you being a new politician, you haven't screwed anyone over, uh, you haven't really got any enemies within your party, you haven't made any big sort of gaffes and everything, and people are prepared to work with you as a politician, they don't have a reason not to. Um, and that fades over time as like, you know, you you just amass enemies and mistakes and, and stuff like that. Um, so that's a new like little tool tip I put in there to explain what on earth that is, because it's a little bit confusing. Um, anyway, th that brings me back to this. This value, and it's not final yet, is actually, um, it's actually been tweaked to be slightly higher than it should be, believe it or not. And that's part of this third party problem that I have here. Um, so it now has an extra little boost this feature here, which we call the political honeymoon, and it's something you can turn off in options, um, it's now a thing for voters as well. And I think this is fair enough and that this is accurate. Here it's down here. We've added it here. And when it goes below a certain level, this bar will just disappear. So this is kind of like a boost to um, your popularity with everyone if political honeymoon is turned on, um, depending how new you are. So when you're freshly elected, um, the people who voted for you are like, yeah, we'll give them a chance. We're optimistic. It's like naive optimism. It's like everything they said in their manifesto they will do. Um, all those hopes and dreams that they had in their party broadcasts and their adverts and everything. Um, I believe in that. They're going to do that. And obviously over time, people kind of forget that and they live with the reality. So the reality of politics is a lot more messy and a lot more kind of filled with compromise, as you know, if you played the game. So this is kind of like the naive optimism of the electorate when you are new. Um, and it fades out over time. And I've put it in here because we are calculating it. And um, I want you to be able to see how we come to that number. Something else that I did is I added tooltips here because there was never actual values. Um, obviously we calculate the values right um, but I just didn't display them and they're here now so you can get um, kind of like more of an idea as to how big or small a deal those values are we've done loads and loads of little balance changes that I, I, I won't bore you with but they are in the change list that we put up on our forums and we put up on Steam um, and that I also add to itch um, when we update the files on there. Um, just lots of little things. Environmentalists were getting a little bit too upset about some things. And for example, fossil fuel subsidies, um, oil drilling subsidies, um, they were not reducing the amount of environmentalists enough. And look, there are too many. Um, I think 28.5% of people in Australia identify as environmentalists. Tell me if I'm wrong. Tell me if you're Australian and actually there's a huge environmentalist movement, but I get the impression that there isn't in comparison with um, a, a lot of Western countries, primarily because the coal industry is so powerful and so big. Um, and people keep voting in um, Australian politicians that uh, 
are very much not environmentalists, so I assume that to be the case. Um, anyway, so there have been loads of little balance things. Um, obviously more stuff to come, we've got lots of work to do. Australia will be in the game released when we next update it, which will probably be Wednesday. Um, we're then going to do Spain and Italy, and then we're going to try and do something more interesting. Um, the achievements are too hard, I know that, and I'm going to fix them. I've got data on it, I just need to go through them and work out which one should be made easier. Um, and I know that immigration is unbalanced and that the, the amount of ethnic minorities can be too high and I know that um, immigration is not reduced enough and that um, that level of ethnic minorities can become overwhelming with high GDP. I'm aware of that and I'm going to balance that as well at some point. Um, but basically at the moment I'm just doing a few little bug fixes and really fiddling with Australia to make sure it's fun and playable. It might not be that accurate, but it's, um, you know, n none of the none of the missions are super accurate. We're doing our best. Um, thanks for everyone who has been buying the game, obviously, and giving me excellent ideas and feedback on it. Um, if you're a YouTuber at, or like you're from the press or something, and um, you're thinking, oh my God, I can't cover a politics game because the election's coming up. The election's done. Okay, and, um, you know, we can go back to like normal arguing about policies rather than personalities, maybe. So, um, you know, feel free to, to review the game. Obviously, if you're a player of the game and you're enjoying it um, and uh, you bought the game on Steam, we really appreciate you leaving a, a positive Steam review. That's really good. Um, all stuff like that is it's, it's like really helpful and it's really appreciated. Um, anyway, so uh, that's what's been going on in Democracy 4. Um, I'm still working really hard on it and I will do another video um, in two weeks. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe because apparently that's really important. Um, and I'll see you in two weeks. Thank you.